Hi everyone, today I'm diving into NoCodeDB and let me tell you why I'm excited about this. NoCodeDB is an open source database platform that turns your existing database into a smart spreadsheet interface. Think of it like Airtable but with way more flexibility in how you deploy and manage it. What makes NoCodeDB really interesting is that it gives you a spreadsheet-like interface for working with your data, multiple views including grid, gallery, form, Kanban and calendar, built-in API generation for every table you create and the ability to connect directly to existing databases. But here's where it gets really good. Since it's open source, you can run it wherever you want. And today I'll show you how you can deploy it on CloudStation. First, let's get NoCodeDB up and running on CloudStation. You can deploy NoCodeDB two ways on CloudStation. There are two NoCodeDB templates, the NoCodeDB Lite, uh, which is um, running on SQLite. It's perfect for personal projects or small teams. It's super light and efficient. Uh, we also have the NoCodeDB Pro version, uh, which is using Postgres, SQL and uh, Redis for caching. And uh, it's perfect for when you need a robust database. For this tutorial, I use NoCodeDB Lite since we're building a lead generation system, but you can always upgrade later. And let me show you how quickly it is to set up. So first, all you have to do is go to cloudstation.io slash template store, or you can just click on template store in here, and then click on NoCodeDB Lite. So if you, are, if you do have an account, you're just gonna have to click on deploy and choose your personal workspace or whatever you want to deploy in. So I'm gonna choose my personal workspace and I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna leave all the defaults and click, click on create and deploy. That's all I needed to do to deploy a uh, NoCodeDB Lite on CloudStation. If you don't have an account, you will need to, to sign up uh, using either GitHub, Google or uh, Bitbucket or even just an email. Uh, it's gonna take a few minutes to uh, to create the NoCodeDB instance. So this instance uh, uses 0.5 RAM, uh, 0.25 CPU and 5 gigabytes of storage, but you can always upgrade it and I will show you how to do that later. It's gonna take a few minutes for NoCodeDB to set up and it's gonna use your email, uh, your CloudStation email to create the credentials and it's gonna generate a random password for you. Uh, so here I can see that my email is my, the, the email I'm using for CloudStation and it's, it's generated the password automatically. I'm just gonna wait a few seconds, few more seconds for it to deploy. CloudStation has created a um, domain for us that we can use. So I'm gonna go there and you can see here that I can access it. I'm just gonna grab my email and password from here. So go to variables and you find them and my, my email. I'm gonna pass my password and sign in. So this is what NoCodeDB looks like. Uh, it comes in with an empty uh, products workspace. Now that we've logged in into NoCodeDB, let me show you something really cool. We're going to build a custom contact form without relying on Typeform or any of those expensive third-party services. Trust me, this is going to save you both money and headaches. And now we can create our first base. Let's call it forms. And then let's create a table and let's call it contact. We're gonna build a contact form using NoCodeDB and it's gonna be the easiest way you'll ever do a contact form. So click on table and then by default, uh, we have a title uh, field. We're gonna rename it to name and it's gonna be a single text. And then we're gonna create a new field email, which is gonna be a uh, of an email type and what's cool about NoCodeDB is you can uh, add some uh, validations like uh, for emails to only accept valid emails so we're gonna do that and we're gonna add a website and the same as we did for email we can actually find a, va a validation by default which we're gonna use to only accept valid URLs next we're gonna add a message 
so that's what uh, the user is gonna send us and we're gonna make it uh, of type long text and we're gonna enable rich text and we're gonna also add a phone number of type phone number and we're gonna uh, we're gonna use the validation to only accept valid phone numbers and here I'm gonna show you how to add uh, fields in another way you can just click on details and here we're gonna see another view and we can add fields from here so I'm gonna add the field status so that I can uh, do some stuff with it later when we're gonna add the automation in the next video so all right so it's gonna be a single select and first uh, it's gonna be new and then uh, we can set contacted if we send an email you can add meeting scheduled and then not interested if you couldn't close the deal and finally we can add convert it all right by default i'm gonna set the uh, status to new Whenever a new user is added, it's going to be added by default by the status new. So here, how you can use this uh, in here, uh, like you would use any uh, uh, Google Sheets uh, to populate your to populate your table. So I'm just going to add some random data. Let's say I'm going to say here, I am interested in learning more about your consulting services. It's an example would you would love uh, to discuss and um, just leave it at that we can add some random phone number and you see how this works so it's uh, just like any other google sheet uh, but we can actually make it more interesting and we can create a form based on this table uh, so let's call it contact us And now we actually have a form uh, like you would have a type form or any other form builder that uh, you would use. So we can rearrange uh, the fields that we have. We can uh, change the appearance of the form. I'm going to rename it the title to Let's Connect. I'm going to add a description as well. Um, let's say, tell us about your project or something like that. So I'm gonna remove the status from uh, the form because the users are not gonna be uh, the one we're gonna, who are gonna be changing the status uh, themselves. It's gonna be uh, managed automatically from uh, LocoDB. And I'm just rearranging the, the fields. Uh, let's set a new uh, background color, something darker. And I'm gonna remove the banner you can't uh, remove the NoCodeDB branding from the open source instance, but you can do that from uh, the enterprise one if you if you want to. You can also add a logo with the enterprise one. But right now, this is enough. I'm just going to add a display message once the user has uh, actually uh, submitted the form. But we have other options, like for example, whenever a user... So the display message is going to be like uh, something like, thanks for reaching out, we can talk to you soon. All right, and we can share it. So to share it, you just enable public viewing and you'll have the link to it. Let's test it out. I'm just gonna fill it up with my information. Uh, and, and I'm gonna put my website and some random message. And on submit, and you can see here that we get the message that we got on the submit. All right, if we close and go back to the table, we'll see here that uh, the form the table is updated successfully and we can actually create a new uh, view uh, which is going to be stacked by the status that we just created here you can see all the new uh, contacts are in the new and if we drag and drop from uh, new to contacted it's gonna it's gonna update accordingly there's also another view which is the gallery view and if we had an image uh, it could show up with images but right now it just uh, with names, uh, which is good enough for this uh, use case. And NoCodeDB also creates um, a REST API for each table that we created. So if you're not uh, happy with the look of the form, for example, you can just use the API to, um, to access it. So for that, we need to create a new token. So go to uh, setting and then tokens, and let's create a new token. 
you can name it I'm just gonna name it here API and save and then you can grab the token uh, that that's just generated and we can test it in the Swagger documentation. And let's test uh, with the get records. I'm just going to leave the default setting and just try it out, try it out and then I'm going to move on to the to Postman to really use it. So just click on execute and here it's going to create you, you you will see the results and also it's going to create the curl which I'm going to copy and I'm going to open in Postman. So in Postman, just click on import and paste the curl that you just got, that you just copied. And here you go, you can send and you have the same results. So not only we can get, we can also post. That's what we, do, we would use for um, HTML form that we can create uh, using other other front-end um, languages like uh, Next.js or any. I'm gonna go and copy the posts uh, so that I can uh, try it try that out as well. So just the same, try it, execute, and you can copy the curl directly from here and import it in Postman. All right, just go to body and. Let's uh, add some random variables. Let's go for Jane Doe and some random email, a website, let's say hi, a phone number. And we're not gonna keep the status because uh, that's managed by NoCodeDB. Don't forget to remove the comma. And we have a new record with ID3. If we go back to the get, we're gonna see it added. And if we go to NoCodeDB, in the table section and if you go to the gallery as well we're gonna see it added so that's how you uh, create a form in NoCodeDB now let's let's say we want to add uh, more 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 team members uh, so we need a little bit more power on our NoCodeDB we can scale it so to do so just go to setting in cloud station and go to deploy setting and if you see here in the resources setting uh, we have um, the possibility to add more RAM on uh, CPU so you can play around uh, and just add however how, however much you want to add and just save your changes and then click on deploy changes and just gonna wait a few minutes for it to redeploy and you don't need to worry about your data. Your data is going to be saved because it's using a volume. Once it's redeployed, you're going to be able to see your data exactly how you left them. All right, if we reload the page, it's uh, redeployed. And you can see that we have our data like before. Uh, with NoCodeDB, you can also add like a connection to a Postgres database if you have one. And you can access it from NoCodeDB with the, the UI. Let's add a new team member. So if you go to team settings and click on invite user. Actually, we need an SMTP server for that. So just go to setting and set up. And you can, you're gonna see here, configure email. Just click on configure and choose whatever email provider you want to use. I'm gonna choose SMTP. Uh, you can use any SMTP provider. Uh, you, um, in my case, I'm just going to use a Gmail SMTP uh, server. So just input all your information and test it. And once it's successful, you can move on to add in a new team member. So in users, user management, go to invite user and add the email. So I'm going to add another email of mine. I'm going to change the role to organization level creator and invite. And if I go to my Gmail now, I can see here that I got uh, the email that I've been invited uh, and I can use that to sign up with the email that I've been invited with. I can just choose a password and you click on sign up and you'll be able to see that you are invited in the, the workspace, but you can't but I can't uh, see the tables that I have created earlier. So I'm going to go back to my other account 
and I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna go to uh, the table so the project that I added earlier just go to contact table click on contact and in share section you're gonna be able to see manage base access and you can either enable public access or you can add specific access to the email you created. So I'm gonna add the editor role for this email. And if I go back to the other accounts, I can see now that I have access to the table I created earlier. And I can see every, um, I can see all the, the views and I can see all the, the, the data that I've added earlier. But wait, here's the thing. We built this awesome farm system, it works smoothly, and best of all, you're not paying those crazy monthly fees anymore. But let's be real for a second. What happens when actually someone fills out the form? Sure, you can manually send emails and update statuses all day, or you could spend 10 minutes watching this video where I'll show you how to automate this whole process. Trust me, your future self will thank you for this one.